Jay, tell me uh, a little bit, just a little biography about you in, in your younger days. Where did you grow up? What was life like for a young Jay Rudolph as a kid? Yeah, yeah. well, I grew up um, just east of Fond du Lac, right on Highway 23. Um, we had a, a dairy goat farm there that people probably still, anyone traversing from Fond du Lac to Plymouth or Sheboygan knows the little valley. We came with the name of Rudy Valley Farm because we lived in a little valley about five miles east of town and um yeah and they'd always see the dairy goats out in the out in the field there and so that's that's kind of my start in life was with animals in fact i still judge uh, dairy goat shows all around the country i just got back from judging the colorado state fair in fact so um yeah so that's been a big part of my life 4-h and judging goats and things like that and um, i might as well launch into the radio right that's probably maybe your next question hi how, <laughs> how i got interested in radio but i I love speech class, um, really enjoyed uh, forensics. Um, some may know Oren Miller. Um, he was my teacher at uh, in high school for speech and forensics uh, coach. And so that, that really kind of spurred my interest, um, did some speech stuff in 4-H. And by the age of 12 already, and you may have a similar story, Sean, uh, by the age of 12, I knew that I was going to go into <laughs> some, sort of, some sort of media. My goal or ideal, I guess, was to be sportscaster on a TV station or maybe play-by-play -play for the Brewers or something like that. Um, and so that, that ended up becoming somewhat, somewhat true um, as I got into radio very early on. And we can get into that story in a bit, but that was the basic childhood anyway. Awesome. So then did, did you go off to college or what? Uh, yeah. I'm assuming you went to Goodrich High School or where'd you go to? Or, or... Yep. Went to Goodrich. My whole my whole youth was in Fond du Lac. And um, yeah, I actually had a job shadow in junior high at Tyson um, with Mike Casper. Um, who some may remember, this would be the older Mike Casper of the, the two that were at KFIZ. Um, and so he was GM at the time, I believe. And it was well, just a couple of years after I had that job shadow that he had reached out to me and said, "You, how would you like to actually work for KFIZ? And so I started when I was 17, um, just board hopping for brewer games and Packer games and things like that. Um, and then from there, um, went on to UW Madison. And so that's where my degree is from. And while there, I worked um, in public TV, commercial TV, I worked for a newspaper, I worked for a radio station. So I got, got my feet wet in a little bit of multi things in media. And I, I got to bring up my, my only claim to fame. Uh, Sean, at least uh, to my children, this is a claim to fame anyway, is that I worked with Kurt Menefee. Um, I don't know, you know who Kurt Menefee is? Fox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So for those who don't, the Fox Sports, um, whatever, a halftime guy or <laughs> guy who introduces the games and stuff. So I, I worked at Channel 3 in Madison with him and just a wonderful, wonderful guy. So every time I see him on TV, I'm like, yep, that could have been me, kids. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but from there, then after college, I um, came back uh, to Fond du Lac and took the uh, sports director position. Um, and I think Oh, very shortly thereafter, Wayne Cooney um, retired, and um, I just remember, uh, I think it was Randy Hopper that asked me, but I'm, I'm not sure, whoever whoever was in charge at the time said something to the effect of me, um, like, you you grew up on a farm, um, you must know a little, <laughs> must know a little something, why don't you be the farm director, <laughs> so, so that's how I ended up becoming the farm director as well as sports director, and um, yeah, it was kind of interesting, because, you know, dairy goat farm that I grew up on is a little different from a, a big cattle farm or something, but, but we got through, and, and it was enjoyable, so. What year was that, then, that you would have started uh, after college, do you remember? Yeah, 1990, I graduated college. So, um, yep, I think it was right pretty quickly after that that I came back. So, it was, and then it was about 10 years that I was there before I moved to Iowa. So, so doing sports and the farm directing, what would what would a typical? I suppose there probably wasn't a typical day for you, but what would what would a, a day or a week in the life of Jay Rudolph doing both of those jobs usually look like at KFIZ? Yeah, yeah. Those are pretty long days a lot of times because, uh, you know, the farm director stuff, that would be early morning. Um, oh, I think probably get in about five o'clock and we had a farm report that was on the air somewhere in that five o'clock hour. 
Um, and then I have a horrible memory, so I don't, I don't exactly remember how the whole day went, but I do know that I did play by play of, you know, hundreds and hundreds of games. I was, when I got to your call, it just brought back a flood of memories of doing games, especially with Tom Biolo and Greg Stensland. Um, those two guys, we were just great friends and um so yeah just going out and doing games so it would be you know late night wrapping up and i was listening to the interview um with joe gazer's son and and uh, my hours were not not anywhere near as long as joe's but they were some days they were close <laughs> any games in particular stand out from uh from from, from that time when you covered or teams yeah, yeah. Well, the one thing, uh, two things that stand out, I guess, um, being at Camp Randall um, frequently for St. Mary Springs, um, doing games there. And then I had the blessing, uh, Bob Hyland invited me to go on uh, the bus with the team to, I can't remember if it was Marinette or Menominee in the UP um, there, and they had a big rivalry, whichever one was at Marinette, maybe, I don't know, whichever, there was a Catholic school that was just phenomenal up there, and they would always have a rivalry with Springs, and so I went and got to go on the bus with them and do some interviews on the bus and be right along the sideline and just get the whole, kind of get the whole experience for the listeners, and that was a great time. And what about your time as farm director? Any, any memorable moments, highlights? What did you really enjoy about getting to do that job? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, like I say, my memory's not great, so I'm not sure if I instituted this, or I'm pretty sure I did, but we had a Farm of the Week feature, and so I would go out, um, and uh, probably my number one recollection of that is just how hilarious it was when I would go out to a farm, and I'm I'm like 5'7 and 140 pounds or something like that, and <laughs> every single one of the farmers was just wide-eyed when they saw me for the first time. They were expecting, you know, a big burly guy by my voice, I guess, <laughs> So yeah, that's that's probably the the best experience. But um, yeah, just going out and meeting a lot of farmers, and we did the same thing uh, in the sports end too. We had a oh, now I don't recall if it was player of the week or team of the week, but um, I went out and did the same sort of thing. Did an interview with a player or a coach or whatever um, every week and featured that particular player or coach. So any other fond memories? Uh, just you know, being at the station. And, uh, you know, that relationship that KFIZ has with the community is so special. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And I'm, I'm honored to have been part of the history there. And just thinking about 100 years, that's just uh, amazing. Um, I, I think one of the funny memories that comes, well, a couple of funny, funny memories that come back. Um, one is that uh, I had not done, uh, I, I didn't do many hockey games. And so um, I absolutely love hockey, but I really don't know much about the rules or anything. And so I was pulled into doing a hockey game. I think it was with Tom Biolo. And um, at, at one point, the goalie started, you know, skating off the ice. And I knew enough to know that, you know, um, that sometimes, you know, they pull the goalie when they need to have, you know, an extra skater or whatever. And and so I'm like, wow, that's really strange. I said live on the air, that's really strange that they're pulling the goalie at this, you know, point of the game or whatever. And <laughs> Tom, so so kind and gentle, just kind of leans over and it was over the mic though, so everybody heard it, but he's like, uh, it's the end of the period, Jay. So, <laughs> so yeah, so it's good to pay attention to the clock. I like that. So, uh, the, other, the other funny story is probably was not funny and wouldn't have been funny to the boss at the time. And maybe they, maybe they don't even know, but for those who maybe know anything about radio, we used to have um, the huge reel-to-reel -reel, um, for the music. It was just on these huge reel-to-reel -reel machines that stood probably about seven foot high. And, uh, and and so the music would play on those and it had an auto stop and start feature. And so for the, for the day, for the era, it was pretty high tech. But you know, one of my jobs, you know, as as board up and things was just to keep an eye and make sure that those didn't run out because they could they could run out and there would be nothing on the air. And uh, there was a time when it did run out. <laughs> I remember I think I came out of the bathroom when I went in and I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> the, the reel was like spinning just empty tape. And uh, yeah, that was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> But uh, you, any memories? Uh, so you're, you know, maybe you listened to Rennell's interview. I don't know, but uh, she kind of told the funny story of bumping into you. And you, do you remember that conversation with her, encouraging her to uh, to take the position when you were going to be leaving? 
I do remember that. Yeah, one of the rare things that I do remember. But um, yeah, yes. And I think she had um, she had been working for the newspaper, to my recollection, and um, maybe I believe even interviewed me um, for something with the paper, if, if I'm remembering right. And um, yeah, and so I had told her that, you know, I was going to be moving on and I thought she would be great for the position. And I think she was terrified from what I, <laughs> what I remember. <laughs> and so, but um, yeah, yeah. And I never really got, of course, I moved away then. So I never really got to, to hear her and, but I had known her for years, you know, being in 4-H, um, I, I recollect, I think we were, uh, her family and stuff was in the same 4-H club. So had known her for years. What have you been up to since uh, leaving Fond du Lac? Yeah, well, so uh, basically what transpired, 1995 and 96 were uh, monumental years for me. I met my um, future wife in 95. We got married in 96. And um, what really happened is that you know, I, I grew up in, in church, Sean, um, like a lot of people, but um, I really came to understand and know who Jesus Christ was when I was 20, what would that be, 28 years old. Um, and so when I came into a relationship with Christ, um, that, as it does for hopefully everyone that comes to know Christ, it just dramatically changed my life. Um, and so I... I discovered that God wanted me to to move into Christian radio, and so um, that's a super long story that I won't go into here, but I ended up that a number of factors came into play. Um, we had a commercial goat dairy. Besides the radio, we had a commercial goat dairy as well, um, so we were shipping our milk for cheese, and so basically we we had to decide, are we going to get larger on the farm or are we going to do something else? We were both working part-time off the farm, besides the farm, and just going crazy. And it turns out through, like I say, through a variety of circumstances, God just orchestrated us coming to Iowa. And um, there I became the news director for a, a Christian radio. It was a small pretty small network at the time. There were just a couple stations, but as I, um, they were based out of Blue Earth, Minnesota, and I moved to the Fort Dodge, Iowa area. Um, and so, yeah, so I started as news director and then um, quickly thereafter, the operations manager had moved away. And so they asked me to take that on as well. So then I became manager of one station, news director for all, and did that for almost 22 years until leaving that just a few months ago. So. And how, are you still, still still running a farm? Um, we have just a few goats. Yeah, yeah, just a handful. So <laughs> just enough milk for ourselves. And then, like I say, I, I judge goat shows all over the country. So, um, yeah, and then uh, right now that's what I'm doing really is judging. And then um, I actually, through the Christian radio, I got invited to, to preach or to fill the pulpit a few times. And I found out that I really, you know, really enjoyed doing that, enjoy preparing messages. So almost every Sunday, I'm preaching at a different church somewhere and filling the pulpit for somewhere. So it's been great. Another extension of that, that speech class coming, coming yes. back, right? It's just kind of <laughs> amazing how God has worked with you and you know, just kind of go, describe that. What's it like putting together a sermon and then being up there and, and being able to deliver it to a congregation. What's that like? Yeah. Yeah. Just the preparation of it is, is really wonderful. Um, you know, really digging deep into the word and, and knowing that God is using you to try to reach, um, you know, other people and to, to share his word with them. And it's just really an, an immense burden in a way, but yet it's super enjoyable because um, yeah, I don't know. Every time I get up there, I, I say, you know, I'm just a, just a fallible man. And so when I read from the word of God, you know, pay attention to that and let the Holy spirit work in your heart. And as I might say something that's totally, <laughs> totally boneheaded. So to disregard anything that comes from my, my lack of wisdom, but, um, but yeah, God works through you and it's a great experience and it's a lot of, a lot of work putting together a message, um, but it's, it's worthwhile. So. That's awesome. That's, that's really great. How many kids you guys have? Uh, we have seven. And it's been a crazy busy year. We have our first, first of the seven just got married at the end of August. And then I've got my oldest daughter getting married October 1st. So it's two weddings and in a couple months. <laughs> wow. So yep. quickly story that uh, just a crazy one. I'm sure you definitely won't remember this, but I always will remember this. So 
It, it had to have been probably early 90s, a big snowstorm. I know I they canceled school that day, so I was at home, and my mom was at home, and this is obviously before cell phones. So there had been like a power line or something that had been knocked down in my neighborhood uh, on Hickory Street near military, and uh, you stopped and knocked on our door because you saw it and wanted to call into the radio station and report that live. And I'll, ne I'll never forget uh, just uh -huh. how crazy it was that, and I obviously listened to KFIZ growing up as a kid, so I know who Jay Rudolph uh -huh. was. So for you to be in my house and taking the house phone and calling uh -huh. in, and, and back in those days, KFIZ, you could, you could uh, listen to it on TV. I think it was like channel 13. Right. Um, had, uh, like school messages and whatnot. It was kind of like a community billboard on the television, but then in the background, they aired the KFIZ broadcast. So I know you like went into another room. So then I remember I flipped on channel 13 and I had the volume up. So I was listening to you do the report <laughs> from my house <laughs> in the other room. And it's just, you know, crazy to think that that's, you know, how life was at one point. Of course, now technology, you could get connected with the station without having to knock on a friendly neighbor's door. But <laughs> yeah yeah of all the houses to stop at that's pretty cool yeah absolutely like i said still still remember that fondly to this day uh, any your final thoughts on your time at kfiz and just kfiz that legacy 100 years pretty amazing yeah yeah i do i really treasure that time and um yeah and just the opportunity given to me don jones and randy hopper and those that you know had faith i guess in in me and the abilities that god had given to me and even though then i you know i didn't really know the lord but i i look back and i recognize that you know he uses those things and those circumstances to prepare you for what's to come um and so just the the opportunity to do so many games i, I really miss that a lot i think about that a lot um the play-by-play -play and how fun that was and getting to meet all the different people and yeah, it's an, an icon in the community as it should be. And um, yeah, I pray that God continues to sustain it and keep it keep it going for another hundred.